What is up Bruins fans? Today we're going to be previewing what the contract for Bruins RFA goaltender Jeremy Swayman could look like. So we'll hop into it today starting with of course a little bit of the background and unfortunately for you today this July 4th, happy July 4th to all our American viewers out there. But you know I don't have much to report as of today's date. You know, there's been some rumblings that the Bruins are getting closer. Heck, Jeremy Swayman was even at the Bruins development camp. So, you know, there's a little bit of sign that there's something moving along in the background. However, no news yet to report in terms of any progress on this deal. You know, we've had reports saying that they're really far apart. We've had reports saying that they're close to the finish line. I think, you know, you kind of got to draw from both sides here and say that the deal is within striking distance. Both sides just have to sort of find their way through and find what's really working for them. So with all that being said, let's take a look with what the Bruins currently have. Well, of course, this is Jeremy Swayman, 25 years old. He's an RFA this year. You know, so the Bruins sort of have a little bit of leverage on him to, to sort of wiggle his way into a deal. We'll see, of course, if they use that or if they kind of lose him. In terms of the cap room, you know, we've made a couple videos on this already. You're looking at about... You know, eight and a half ish is what you can spend on a guy like Jeremy Swayman. Likely not going to be making any more roster moves to, to, to this team. They're a solid team all in all. We'll see if that can continue. You know, they've put the pieces in place for them to be a more physical team this year. We'll see if that can continue into the season, especially if they can play their game. It's going to be a dangerous team to watch. But let's talk about the goaltending here. Last year, 44 games played for Swayman, 25, 10, and 8 record. For a 916 save percentage, 2.53 goals against with three shutouts. The previous years were Swayman really sort of shown a little bit more playing alongside a really solid defensive team. You had 37 games played, 24, 6, and 4 record with a 2.27 goals against and a 920 save percentage. And this is still a goaltender, you know, lots of room to fill out. He's been playing behind Allmark. That is going to be changing this year, we think, to that trade, you know, where the Bruins shipped it out for the pick, Kostelik. And now the question becomes, you know, what is going to happen? Is Are they going to be making a bigger move? Is there something else in the works for the Bruins? And I think, you know, for the Bruins, you know, I think you just got to keep it simple. Sign your guy with Swayman and move it along. Keep your team nice and physical. You know, you don't need to make any more moves. It's a solid team. But the trick is now, can you get Swayman under the cap? You know, we talked about it. Eight and a half-ish million to spend on your goaltender. And you moved Allmark out, which means there's really nothing behind you. You know, you picked Corpus Allo up in that deal as well. A lot of people weren't happy with that. But the truth is, Corpus Allo is one of the key reasons why, you know, a guy like Swayman will stay under the eight and a half mark, in my opinion, just because the fact that you can say, okay, Swayman, you know, you're not, you're not going to get more than this because we do have a, a quality guy who's been there, who's done that in the past. You know, you can't boss us around in this sense. This is why you're going to get this much and because you're going to be a starter, but you're not going to play every game. That's sort of the trick to this negotiation for the Bruins here is to show that, you know, you have guys in the chamber. That's where I think guys like Bussy and Corpus Allo are really there for to sort of show that to Swayman that, you know, you can try and boss us around. But at the end of the day, we still have guys that are going to be able to provide for us if you're not going to sign on a team friendly ish deal, you know, it's Let's be honest here. Swayman is going to get his pay in this one. It's just a matter of how much and for how long. In my opinion, the Bruins are going to lock him up long term. You're looking at probably eight years. And we'll talk about sort of the contracts to sort of see who's in that realm already. And I think, you know, we'll flip it over here now to some of the guys that I think could be in that range. You, know, you take a look at a guy recently signed on July 1st of this year. You've got like UC Sorrow, $7.74 million over eight years he's 30 years old this year as of the time signing his contract so by the time that contract's done it'll be about 38 and this is one of those deals right we're 7.75 in my opinion this is sort of the floor of where you're looking for a guy like Swayman on the eight-year deal you're probably going to get a little bit more than more than that just because of the fact he is a younger player he's able to provide on that in, in that aspect so in my opinion you know 30-year-old goaltenders versus 25-year-old goaltenders producing roughly the same. You know, we'll see if Swayman can step into that role this year. He is still an unproven starting goaltender. He's played behind Allmark. Sure, you know, the start, especially in the playoffs this year, lights out for the Bruins. But at the same time, you know, that's a stretch of series. Now the question becomes, you rest him up 
last year all through the regular season you know he's playing half the games so that way when he gets to the playoffs he's rested what's it going to be this year when he's playing 70 percent 80 percent of the games that's something to really really keep an eye on here for the Bruins to see how they decide to manage Swayman's minutes this year especially in terms of his games play but let's move it along here you know you have sorrow 7.74 over eight years Another one I, I sort of look towards is a guy like uh, Connor Hellebach, right? 8.5 over seven years, 31 years old. This was signed earlier last year, you know, it was sort of late last year, 2023, October the 9th. And this is another one, right, where it's sort of that weird realm, right, where you're thinking, you know, he's sort of getting up there in age, once again, sort of ending his contract out around 38. Definitely one to take note of there. And then we move it along here, looking back at a previous year. And this is another interesting one, right? Where it's Elias Sorokin, and he's a guy, you know, for the Islanders, who's another one of those quote-unquote franchise goaltenders. You know, he got 8.25 on the open market for eight years. What is Swayman going to get? In my opinion, it's really similar to that. You know, he's contract-wise, you know, the way that these two goaltenders have sort of lived up to expectations and have played their role inside of their organizations think back to the Varlamov sort of them splitting time with Sorokin that's where these two guys are sort of similar and I think that's where the contract is really going to sort of divvy up sure Sorokin was 28 when he signed this deal um or Swayman rather is 25 so there's a little bit of drawback there but I think at the end of the day you know for Swayman it's going to be around that realm is what you're looking for in terms of Sorokin's contract, you know, 8.25 over eight years. That's a heck of a payday if you're looking at it in, in any sense, not to mention as a goaltender who's locking up long term at that at that rate. Something to take note of there. The next one is Peter uh, Kalkachev, uh, 24 years old, 2 million over four years, November, November 22nd, 2022. And this is a guy, 24 years old, signed a, long, a four year extension. That's one of the other things that the Bruins could, in theory, do with Swayman. I don't really like it. You know, the Canes sort of having a lot of different goaltenders at that point. What were they going to do? You know, they signed uh, Peter to that deal. What's next? I don't know, you know. So for the Bruins, if you're going to sign him short term, you always have to remember that there is the potential for a guy like Swayman to walk in free agency, and you can't lose that asset. You look at what happened to Allmark's value this year, you know, the the uh, the whole point and the whole reason why Allmark's value fell from Shikrin in a first down to you know Corpusalo in a first was the fact that the buyers left the market and the Bruins realized they weren't getting much in free agency for him because Allmark likely would have walked if he's not playing starter minutes. You need to give some room for Swayman. You have to give some room for Bussy at some point. Sure enough, they kind of find a way around Bussy. What's going to happen with him? You know, that becomes the question, and I think similar in Carolina where they had a log jam of goalies. What was next? You're going to sign to a bridge deal. You know, what's what's to come for all the goaltenders in Carolina? The question was eventually answered. But, of course, for the Bruins, sign swimming long term. That's what you're doing here. That's just, I wanted to show Peter there for that reason, sort of, you know, give you a little bit of an idea that there are bridge deals out there. But at the same time, you're going to have to move someone at some point, And that becomes the problem with blocking a guy up short term because the guy will lose value, especially as you head towards the trade deadline of that year. If you can't sign him and you're not going to give him a lot of starter minutes, that becomes sort of the issue there, especially when they want to leave. My point, I think, has been proven at this point. So moving along here to the next guy. And this is one of the sort of the interesting ones with Igor Shesterkin with 5.67 over four years. And this was one of those bridge deals. And this is where, once again, it becomes the problem. You, th you look at what he's asking for now, which is an absurd amount of money, about 10 to 11 is what he's looking for over a long-term gain here. But he signed this when he was 25 back in 2021. And, you know, for the Bruins, if you're going to sign a bridge deal, you have to sort of weigh the risk that Swayman is going to outperform like Jesterkin has is if you put him on a bridge deal, he might ask for more. Whereas, you know, if you can lock him up long term now for eight years at a, at a semi discounted rate, you know, 8.25 ish, right around that cusp, you know, you could go a little higher, a little lower, right around that edge. I think you're looking at a really decent contract, uh, especially long term value. You know, you think about the cap going up with the percentage going down. 
that might be where the Bruins can really shine here, especially, you know, I think about the, uh, the Corpusalo deal where that's a little bit of cap on your goaltending side too becomes the problem if you lock up too much money in terms of your goaltending. But that's another sort of option for the Bruins is a short-term deal, you know, sort of bridge gap it and then see what Swayman does in the starter role. But, you know, you have to take into consideration that that could backfire in the end. So in my opinion, eight years is the way to go here. Moving along here to Thatcher Demko back in 21 as well. He's a 25-year-old, signed five million by five years. This is another one of the sort of half bridge gap deals you look at him now, sort of where he is, probably could have got a lot more if he would have done that a shorter bridge deal. But at the same time, really good value from the Canucks here. Sort of looking once again, sure, it's a little bit shorter of a term, but you get a, a really solid goaltender for a lot for a lot less money than you would have if you had to extend him long term. Another option for the Bruins, but I'd still recommend going with the eight years. And now let's take a look at some of the more comparable goaltenders if you want to say that with a guy like Andre Vasilevsky you think back to 2019 25 year old very similar to what Swayman's looking at now nine and a half million over eight years is what he ended up going for and that's where once again right you think about it that's where the comparable starts in my opinion you're looking at a guy like Saros right Saros is sort of your bottom line Vasilevsky in my opinion is sort of that ceiling I don't think you go much higher than that now, of course, the other problem becomes you can't really afford it in terms of your cap. But I think if you're Swayman, you can't really ask for much more than arguably the best goaltender in the league at nine and a half over eight years. So I think that's where you can really sort of see that comparison is anywhere in the range of 7.75 to nine and a half, in my opinion, is where you're looking for Swayman to sort of come in as if you are going on an eight year deal. If you're going on a bridge deal, you could probably get him a little bit lower I don't know how much lower you can get, though. You think back to arbitration last year with Swayman, kind of a messy scenario. So we'll see what goes on with the Bruins here. The other one, sort of moving down the list here, is $10 million over seven years for Sergei Bobrovsky. And this is another one, right? 30 years, years old when he signed it back in June, uh, July 1st, rather, of 2019. And that's one of the things, right? It's just a matter of if you can sign a guy long-term versus short-term, you know, 10 million over seven years. What's to come of that contract? You look at it now, it's great, right? But at the same time, in eight years, Swim will be 33 versus a guy like Bobrovsky, where if he signs this contract, it's all the way up to 37. That becomes the problem, right? It's just, if you're looking at a long-term value, it's only a matter of time before it comes and backfires on you. So for, in that sense, you got to be careful, right? You got to be careful with how long you're extending them. But I do think a 33-year-old goaltender will produce similar numbers to a 25-year-old goaltender, especially with the experience that you gain. I think you're sort of on that cusp. I think an eight-year deal is perfectly fine at 25. The longer you wait for it, like you look at Saros' deal, 30 down to 38 could become a problem there. And the last one we'll take a look at here is John Gibson, 6.4 over eight years. This was signed back in 2018. So you got to remember the cap has gone up a little bit since then, but 25 years old uh, in very similar situation to a guy like uh, Swayman, where, you know, the, the Ducks committed and they committed to John Gibson for year, for eight years and said, you know what, we trust in you. We're going to, we're going to ride you out. And sure enough, you know, that's what happened with John Gibson. He found his way in the long run. And I mean, it looks like a pretty good deal for the Ducks now. Sure. They haven't been great, but you know, you sort of build it up as you go. That contract will expire in two years now, but you know, the Ducks, you get a long-term asset in John Gibson. who has been on numerous trade talks in my opinion, it's only a matter of time before he does get traded. And you look at sort of what the Ducks are doing, slowly but surely now, making their way back into the playoffs. And I do think it's only a matter of time before they really make that final push and find their way back into the playoffs and do some serious damage with John Gibson as their back end. Could be interesting there. You know, he's starting to get up there in age. But I do think there is a there is a potential for a guy like John Gibson to really help his team. And very similar to Swayman, you know, the trick for Swayman is he is the guy in Boston now, right? No more Linus Allmark or Linus Allmark rather to sort of protect him, especially when he goes on a cold spell, but now it's one or the other. So we'll see what goes on there. We'll flip it over now here to my project, my prediction rather, and my projection, whatever you want to call it for Jeremy Swayman. My opinion, 
he is going to get 8.25 million over eight years. Big shocker. I think I've been saying it the entire video, but the truth is 8.25, in my opinion, is very reasonable. You know, you slot in between Saros and you slot in between uh, sort of a guy like Vasilevsky. It's a very similar co contract to the Sorokin deal, who once again, very similar spots, you know, coming off the tandem with Farlamov. You have the sort of both aspects going there. I think if you're Swayman's agent, you don't want to ask for too much more than that and you handcuff the Bruins, but at the same time, there is potential, you know, with that, uh, you have that wiggle room in the cap where you can probably go up by an extra 250. You just, of course, have to be careful not to go too high. In my opinion, 8.25 is a great deal for Bill Swayman. It's a great deal for the Bruins. You know, you get both aspects and you get the long-term gain with Swayman. Now it's just a matter of time to see how Swayman performs as the starting goaltender. One more thing, July the 7th, I'm going to go with that as my prediction date. I think it'll get hot really quickly, especially with uh, development camp starting to go ending here. You know, end of the week, this development camp's over. And then I think the focus will turn to a guy like Jeremy Swayman. And I think it's, this deal is going to get hammered out pretty quickly because they don't want this one to run on too long and have other teams interested poking around. So we'll see what goes on there. But now let's take a look at the current lines with the cap space updated here. I know you guys didn't like the, the lines that I made for the last video, so I just kept them. Don't judge the lines too much. This is more so just to show the cap space. With $386,000 left in the cap, with the addition of Swayman at 8.25, you have the wiggle room to go up to 8.5. Anything more than that, you start to run into some dangerous territories within your cap. So if you're the Bruins, 8.25 is perfectly reasonable. You can drop a little bit if you'd like, but just be oh so careful not to really try and poke around too much in terms of the cap. I think when we look at this, the Bruins need their goaltender and they need Swayman. Now it's just a matter of price. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like, if you're subscribing, tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on Jeremy Swayman. Until next time, see you.